In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint an impressionist watercolour painting of a city centre. Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. So I'm starting out with my A2 mixed media paper. I've got my uh, De La Rowney Aqua Fine. It's kind of a little portable watercolour kit. And I'm starting out with a Jackson's Raven number six synthetic mop brush. So the first thing I'm going to do is just spray the paper with water. I think I said it was mixed media paper. It's not. I just remembered it's uh, it's watercolour paper. It's the Langton. Um, and uh, my spray was also set on the wrong setting there. So I'm just going to lift off a little bit of that water that I put down. So I just wanted a misting. So first thing is to uh, get a bit of water in the lid of this little kit. And I'm picking up some cerulean blue. And I'm going to grab a little bit of cadmium red. And the first thing I'm going to put in is the, in is the sky. So if I think of the biggest shapes in my painting, there's essentially a tri an inverted triangle of sky here. And uh, it comes up a little more steeply here. So that's the first shape to put in place. And then I'm going to, using some of that liquid I've got in the lid, I'm just going to grab a little bit of the ultra ultramarine blue. And while that triangle of sky is still wet, let's get a bit more of that cadmium red, a bit more of the blue. I'm just going to let's get, make that a little more blue. Just add a you know indication of some clouds, and we'll spray that with water as well, just to let that do its own thing. Okay, so the next thing I can do is think, well, what's the kind of the the next important shape? And there are buildings kind of coming down here on the left-hand side. So I've got the red on the go already, so I may as well add to that, add some extra red. And that's going to give me a reasonable approximation of the colour of the buildings. So without being too fussy about it, let's get a bit more water on the paper. I'm just going to spray the paper there so that that run can be lifted off. I'm working with the, the board really quite close to vertical. So I've got some buildings in here. Uh, and there's a bit of a... I'm not going to copy the landscape exactly, but um, there is a bit of a a dip in the buildings there. So what I'll do is perhaps just spray that bit, maybe help that uh, bit of blue sky run down. Either way, I'm going to have to fill in that little triangle at some point. But for now, I can just think about the biggest shapes. And the high street kind of comes down here, that kind of angle. And then as we get closer, this part of the building is a bit lighter. And in fact, there's some blue in there. Now, a bit difficult to tell, but if I had to guess, I would say this side of the high street is a little lighter. Uh, sorry, a little darker, I should say. So I'm actually going to uh, just add some burnt umber to that mixture, a bit more of the red. Again, there's a building poking out here. And there's also kind of a, a rounded 
round topped cylindrical building here off in the distance so we can sort of suggest that and then we've got a, a road coming down this way I can probably get away with using the same color but I'm just going to add a little touch of orange to that mixture so in fact actually I'm just going to make this line a little more sh shallow so that it's closer to reality so there's the road going off into the distance and in fact I didn't get the line of that quite right so we'll just lift off a little bit of that so that disappears off into the distance more and then have I left it too long it just so soften that so that, that triangle isn't quite so obvious now the pavement looks kind of bluish um, I mean obviously it's a grey but it's kind of a bluey grey so that's going to mirror the sky quite nicely so what we'll do is grab some of the ultra marine blue some of the burnt umber that's probably good enough for now comes up a little higher than I had it just remixing the color so that's come out slightly different but that's okay a little bit of variation in the tone and color is all right but I will add a bit more blue to that And those bits of dry brush down towards the bottom of the painting very happy to have those there as well um, adds a little bit of texture to proceedings now on the left hand side where I've left this white gap just going to grab some ultramarine blue and mix that in with what I've got um, on the palette just get the surface of the painting fairly wet so there's kind of a shop front or something a bit of an awning coming out there and then it's quite dark down here so even though it's not blue I'm going to put that in as blue and there's a bit of a gap and then let's get a bit more water on the go so this is all quite dark in the reference let's smooth that out a bit and then just want to add a little bit of a different color on this white bit so the just picking up a little bit of yellow ochre and we'll just run that in there down there and through there well the painting's still fairly damp I've just switched to a smaller brush and mixed up a combo of ultramarine blue burnt umber and cadmium red and so what I'm about to do may well produce some cauliflowers here and there but uh, I'm not too concerned about that I, th I think that often creates some quite interesting effects so what I'm going to do to begin with is just come in and ind indicate where one of those arched windows is and then we'll put another one in there and another one and then just hint at another one there and then there are some other or I'm going to put in some square rect or rather rectangular windows there and then another one there and then in terms of the shop fronts um, on the on, on the ground level I'm going to do something similar just so that they, these things disappear off into the distance and then just a few flicks for the more distant stuff then on the other side of the high street let's put a line of shadow in down there and then it's difficult to see exactly what's going on because of the bus stop which i'm not going to going to paint but so i'm just going to put in some marks to 
indicate the presence of some kind of windows and shop fronts. And then I can probably use that same color. Let's just grab some more of it. So I'm just mixing up some of the blue, some of my red, some of the burnt umber. So it's come out slightly differently, but that's OK. And then what we'll do is we'll start to put in this chap here, put in this chap here in the foreground. So So there's some indication of his head. So I'm looking very much at the silhouette rather than worrying about detail and color. And then there's a lady here in the uh, foreground. I, I'm just pondering whether I want to paint her or not. I think I will. I think I will. Again, just thinking about the silhouette of what I've got in front of me rather than anything else. She's carrying some kind of briefcase. And then we can start to, while well, things are still wet, without really doing any drawing as such. I'm going to ignore the tree that's in the centre, by the way. Um, I can just start to place some people. That are occupying this this road. And for the very distant stuff, you know, really just a couple of some vertical marks, really. And then, OK, so at this stage, I'm just going to let it dry and then we'll come back and have a proper look in a bit. Well, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, switch to this flat brush. And I'm just grabbing what looks to be some magenta. I'm going to mix that in with uh, the adjacent purple, possibly alizarin, crimson, difficult to tell. And I'm going to add some burnt sienna to that mixture. I'm keeping the paint fairly concentrated so I'm, so that the chap on the in the foreground here he's wearing a dark blue shirt but the woman on our left of him in the foreground she's also wearing blue and you know i may i may come back in and change my mind and say well let's make them both blue but for now i want to keep a bit more warmth in the coloring of this guy's top so i'm using the flat brush here because it just gives you know, a different character of mark, uh, a little bit more of a precise edge. And it allows me to kind of carve out the figure in a way that's a little bit more difficult to do with the round brush. Now, that said, I've done plenty of figure drawing with a round brush over the years, and it is, you know, really good fun, and it does produce really nice effects, but they're, they're different, you know, different things. So for now, that's why I'm sticking with uh, this situation. So just starting to model his top and then my thought at the moment is to make use of this underlying wash to describe the um the shoulder strap that of the bag that he's carrying so i'm going to leave a gap 
and in doing that I've kind of automatically drawn in the strap. And again, you know, all of these things are subject to change. So I'm running out of paint a little bit, but so far reasonably happy with that. So let's grab some of that same colour combination. Now, my first bit of brushwork kind of put his uh, arm in a different position down here compared to the reference, but that's OK. You know, I'm just going to go with the flow on that one. Um, and then I think what I will do is we'll make use of this same colour, but I'm going to add a bit of what looks to be cadmium yellow. And we'll use some of that on the on the face here. So I think this will be a reasonable shadow colour. And we'll put in a hand as well. I can probably make use of that same colour for that lady's hand and there as well, as well. So I'm just going to wash the brush out next. Now, when it comes to this chap's trousers, I deliberately left this gap here to give me a little bit of wiggle room in terms of creating a highlight. So I'm just going to pick up some yellow ochre and we'll begin by just um, blocking in most of that area. And yeah, I will be coming in with some with some darker shadows later. I can probably put a little bit of that yellow ochre up there as well. Let's grab a bit more of that. And that may well work reasonably well on this lady's hair. And then we'll just pick up a little bit of the um, burnt sienna. Let's get a bit more. Just kind of darken some of that hair in a couple of places. Now for her top, I'm just coming in with pure ultramarine blue. And when I'm working away here, if some of the underlying initial wash, the initial silhouette shows through, then that's absolutely fine. You know, that's kind of part of the process I've been through to um, to create this painting. So I don't mind if people can see that. Now I'm going to use a similar technique that I, to the one I used before for the for the strap. Just going to leave a little gap there, and then now her trousers I do want to make darker than the top. So for the moment, just going to carry on with this blue. Keeping in mind the, the hair. And then we'll take some more of that blue and then pick up what I think is either a very dark grey or black and mix that in. And 
And so what I'm trying to do here is a balance between preserving some of the gestural marks and sense of motion that I've achieved with that first wash and then also looking at the reference to refer to that to, you know, to make sure things are working OK. I think I can afford to darken her bag a bit, but I'm going to make that uh, pick up some of this green. Oh, well, that's a bit too vibrant. Let's grab the other one. Put a bit of that red into it just to dull it down a little bit. No, don't like those lines, so we'll just block that in and darken it a bit further. Um, OK, so I'm just thinking if I can use that green elsewhere. I think if I dilute it a bit, mix it in with the uh, the kind of flesh tone I had before, I think that might make a reasonable shadow colour over here. Yeah, I think that should be all right. So going back to the trousers, And then we can return to this chap and darken some of the some of the top. So I'm grabbing some of the cadmium red. And we'll take some of this ocean blue actually. So it's actually quite difficult to see in the reference um, exactly what's going on in terms of the light and dark. It's, you know, it's a very dark top he's wearing and he's mostly in shadow. Um, but I still, want to, I still want to leave some of the peaks of this underlying red colour showing through. But what I will do is use this colour to just darken a little bit that um, strap of the bag so that... Um, it's not quite as prominent on his right hand side. And again, I can probably use some of this to darken some of his face. And it's not quite the colour I intended, but there's no reason why I can't just um, begin to put some of, some of his hair in as well. And then for this lady's top, I want to do something similar but I want it to be uh, a different shadow colour. So I'm picking up some of the ultramarine blue. We'll grab some of the cadmium red. Let's grab some of that purple permanent alizarin. A bit more of the blue, a bit more of the ocean blue. So it's much more of a purple now. And again, it's quite difficult in my reference, at least at the angle I'm viewing it in, in this particular room to see the light and dark, but we will. A little bit of artistic license, but also you know, picking up what I can see from the reference. I don't want to impinge on the hair too much. So I'm trying to keep my brush strokes fairly bold 
and swift because I don't want to lose some this you know too much of the spontaneity that I, I put into the initial washes. Now let's grab a bit of the orange and mix that in with what I've got on the brush and that can allow me to put some fingers in in shadow there on that guy. Now dare I try and put some glasses on this chap with this brush. Here, let's give it a go. There we go, just a hint of some glasses. Well, I've switched to some uh, tube watercolours now. So I've got a little bit of Naples yellow, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, cerulean blue. And um, I'm just going to try using these to give me a little bit more vibrancy. So barely any water going into the Naples yellow. And I just want to grab just a little bit more water. Just want to use that to put some uh, highlights on the top of this lady's hair. And even a little bit, there's some kind of buckle on the strap, so we'll just put a touch there. Then the same colour, I'm going to put just a little bit of light catching back of this chap's neck. I've almost run out of paint. Actually, I needed to uh, squeeze some more out of the tube. Put a bit there as well. Perhaps a bit on the back of the hand. Yeah, I need to get some more paint. Just one second. OK, we're back and we've got some some more Naples yellow. Yeah, I don't think I need any more of that for the moment. Um, now, the question is, do I want to do anything more to the background? At the moment, I'm kind of thinking I don't because it just sort of keeps the focus on the two main figures. And I like this third figure here. I don't think I want to add any more. I am tempted, I must admit, to put some signs in here or something. But for now, I'm going to leave it. Um, so let's uh, let's mix a little bit of that Naples yellow in with the, the lighter of the two blues. Get just a little bit of water and uh, we'll put a flash of green in there just to sort of complement the reddish top that I've got going on. And then uh, I think I'm going to add a bit more of that blue. And add a bit more in the way of green to some of the shadows. on this guy's trousers. He's wearing kind of combat pants, so he's got there's a bit of a pocket there. So I've just added a hint, just the slightest hint of a, a button. And then we'll go in with the ultramarine blue and add to that same mixture. And just add couple of lines here and there. I think that's enough. I don't want to. The effect I've got so far is relatively subtle and I, I quite like that. So I haven't cleaned the brush out, but I'm just um, working into the uh, 
the little patch of ultramarine blue that I have there. We'll put a little bit of burnt sienna in with it. And we can run a bit of shadow along the underside of that bag strap. And add some stronger shadows um, to the lady's top, just diluting the paint a little bit. Just want to soften some of, some of these. Use that same colour to put some bag straps in. And then let's add a bit more burnt sienna to that mixture. But perhaps we'll come back in with some pure um, cerulean. Just a few licks. Here and there on the coat so that, you know, we're just picking out little bursts of colour. And I've switched back to, oh no, I haven't yet. <laughs> um, I'm just switching to uh, another flat brush and uh, I'm just going to grab some of this pure burnt sienna, just fairly dilute, just to give this lady a bit more of a hint of the bag and colour in that uh, bag strap as well. So it's a bit more in keeping tonally, make that a little bit darker actually. And then I kind of want to just put a little line, oh not so much a line, so I'm mixing, I'm mixing that burnt sienna in with the um, little bit of the ultramarine blue and I just want to put a bit, of, a bit more shadow down there. And then I'm just going to dip into the pure Naples yellow, just with the end of the brush. Into that still wet burnt sienna. Just put a few uh, highlights coming off of her hair. Hey, did you know I've recently uploaded over a thousand images to my website, mikejewelry.co.uk. So let's take a look at the finished painting. This one I feel is really kind of in keeping with that feeling you get when you sort of walk through town and you're thinking about anything other than where you're actually going. So the two figures in the foreground are quite in focus and the rest is barely defined and for that reason I'm going to call this painting Lost in a Daydream. Hope you enjoyed this video, please remember to like the video and I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.